Okay, this is the first of a series of tutorials about working with RAW files. What we're looking at now is a program called Adobe Camera Raw that comes free with Photoshop and also a version that comes free with uh, Photoshop Elements. Now you don't need to do anything special to uh, get your picture into Camera Raw. All you have to do is go to Photoshop and uh, open a RAW file and this program will automatically fire up. Uh, when you've finished working in uh, this program, then you can open it in Photoshop for further work, or you can save it as a JPEG or whatever. Okay, this, in this first one, we're going to look at the right-hand side here. I'm just going to click on that to open it up and then fit the picture back into view. Um, and you can see what's going on uh, down here. Top, on the top of the picture we've got the histogram. Uh, this is a, a graph of the distribution of pixels in the picture and this is going to change as we edit. And you can see from this that we've got uh, clipping in the shadow area. This is the left hand side so it's the shadow area. And we've also got a major amount of clipping in the highlight area. So the camera has rendered this middle section more or less correctly. But the clouds up here have gone very, very white indeed. And a lot of the detail has gone. Uh, if you look here, just below the histogram, you've got RGB. And as I pass the cursor over the picture, you can see the numbers coming up. Now these are the values of each pixel that I'm pointing at uh, and the scale runs from 0 to 255. So 255 is pure white and 0 is pure black. Uh, now as you can see this patch here is a completely bald patch. 255, 255, 255. So completely and utterly white. Now if this was a JPEG you'd be kind of stuck with that. That's that's uh, tough luck, you know. Uh, the camera has done the processing for you and uh, all those extra bits of detail have been completely lost because it's been cut off at this point. Now because this is a raw file, we've got all the original values although they can't all be displayed at once. So if we look at this exposure uh, uh, slider down here and I pull it to the left to decrease the exposure. You can see the picture's getting darker and, and also the histogram, everything's moving across to the left. And if I move it, if I move it all the way, you can see that there are some completely white bits uh, represented by that little bulge at the end there. Uh, but mostly we've got a set of pixels that we can actually distribute uh, a little bit better along the line. So coming back to around about here, we've got some nice detail in the clouds. Um, very few actually completely white pixels. Uh, and they, we've got a nice little, um, nice little pattern in the clouds. We'll take it up a little bit because of course what has happened is that the rest of the picture has got very, very dark. But we're going to fix that in a minute. Okay, so moving on down the list of things, we've got uh, all the details of where we shot the camera and uh, of details of, of uh, what the exposure was in the camera, should I say. And down here we've got the color controls and we'll have a look at those when we've got the contrast and the balance right. So exposure we've just looked at. Uh, Recovery and fill light, I'm going to come back to there. Ones that I rarely use, uh, if ever, uh, but they do have some uses, and I'll show you in a minute. Uh, blacks deals with the shadow area. Now, in this picture, we've got obviously more contrast than we can handle, uh, so the last thing we want is to cut off any blacks. What this basically does, uh, if I just put the exposure back there for a minute, um, I can show you the blacks. It will actually clog up the um, the shadow area, so it it moves the black point in effect. 
um, which can be useful for giving it a bit of extra punch to the picture. I mean, you can see if this had been a wishy-washy picture, it's a good way of getting that extra oomph into the picture. But in this particular case, we're looking at a picture with way more contrast than we can handle. So we've got to try and get it down as much as possible. So we're going to knock the blacks back to zero. Now the brightness control here is going to be our savior or one of them. Uh, this, as we push that up, what it does, if you look at the actual histogram rather than the picture, uh, you can see that it moves the whole middle section from one end to the other. So it's redistributing the pixels, but sort of around the center, like in a, in a sort of curved way, uh, a bit like the curves in Photoshop. So we can push up a middle bit without destroying the clouds too much. Now by just tweaking these two knobs, we can get something a bit more like what we want. Okay, contrast does what it says on the tin, high contrast, low contrast. Uh, so once again, it should, it should be used quite subtly. You can save the picture a little bit with that. Um, if we look up here now, we can see that we've nearly got rid of all the problems there. And we've got slight problems there, uh, but not too bad. Now the center of our picture probably needs to be raised. Now we've got some quite nice detail in there. It doesn't look too wishy-washy, although I think it does look a little bit wishy-washy. So we're probably going to push the contrast back up a little bit. Um, as you can see, this is quite a difficult day because we've got some weak sunspots uh, around the picture and we've got some very dark trees there. Now, we can actually see what we're doing now, which is a good start. Um, so we're going to go and have a look at the color. Now, these color knobs, or this particular color knob, is not really a yellow-blue, as it's shown here. It is a, a true color temperature uh, knob. So we can go for cool temperature, which is... Well, it's yeah, it is sort of blue, but it's it's more of a bluey green. Um, although that looks actually royal blue there, doesn't it? But and if we go up the other way, you can see now that it's not yellow; it's orange. Okay, so this is true color temperature, um, rather than what you get in the RGB sliders. You would have to adjust the red and the yellow to get the same effect as you would with this. Uh, so looking at our picture, I'm looking, I, I want sort of uh, some fairly warm bits here. And if you look just here as I move the slider, you can see that that starts to go blue very quickly. So I would tend to push that up a bit. I, want, I like warm pictures. Uh, so something like that. Uh, the magenta to green is uh, not used that often. You know, it it's used if you've ta been taking pictures with uh, fluorescent light. You may need to balance up, as you've probably, if you've tried it, you'll know that you get quite a green sort of cast when you when you do that. So you may need to tweak back uh, and and take some magenta out there. Now, in this sort of picture where everything is predominantly green. Uh, the likelihood is the camera would err on the side of too much magenta. So you'd need to pull back the green a little bit just to recover it. Because as you know, uh, cameras try to integrate everything to mid-gray. So they would overcompensate one way because there's too much green in the picture. Okay, moving on down, we've got recovery and fill light, which I'll you know talk about a little bit later. Uh, but basically, well, we'll talk about it now. Um, recovery will, if you look at the clouds, it will recover highlights. So it shouldn't have too much effect on the lower part of the picture. But it will pull a bit more detail out of those clouds. Um, now, 
whether that what whether that's the best way to do it or whether it's best to work on the exposure probably a bit of both um, we'll pull out the maximum amount of detail we're not going to get every scrap of detail out of these because this would be too dark if we do now the fill light kind of does the opposite what it does it works in a similar way to if you had a massive great big light on the camera and you were whacking it towards this scene um, it will lighten it up as though you had lit from the front as I say so whereas without it we've got um, some you know top lighting and there's some very dark bits so it's it's dragging out the the shadows and pulling them out just a little bit so worth having but if you do too much of it uh, it does weaken the picture and and uh, the shadows kind of disappear down here we've got a contrast knob which uh, everybody's fairly familiar with contrast I would imagine that's what it does from one end to the other uh, very weak contrast very strong contrast so quite useful if you're taking pictures on a very sunny day and you've got uh, faces that are uh, you know got big deep shadows in the eyes then you can knock down the contrast and retrieve it a little bit but you have to be a bit careful that the picture doesn't become too muddy right down the bottom here we've got three rather obscure knobs or one particularly obscure knob called clarity uh, probably not much use with landscapes uh, if I turn it fully up it doesn't do much at all basically it's sort of sharpness but not quite uh, if I drag it down you'll see what it does it absolutely muddies the whole thing up um, I don't know quite how to describe that effect but it's pretty horrible isn't it uh, it can be quite useful used in a very very subtle way on a portrait just to uh, even up the skin to soften the skin just a little bit if you've got too harsh uh, you know too many uh, nice nasty red bits in the skin saturation uh, I think we're all familiar with what saturation is uh, so you increase the saturation it becomes completely yucky and if I take it down this knob then the picture becomes purely black and white uh, it's saturation knob is really a blunt instrument and to be used with extreme care whereas the vibrance control is kind of like a fine tuner really what the vibrance control does is it uh, affects the unsaturated pixels more than the saturated ones so it works in a kind of geometric progression so we can tweak that a little bit to give us a wee bit more uh, literally vibrance I suppose a bit more saturation where it's needed uh, but the heavily saturated bits don't get affected too much okay so that covers all the knobs down here um, as you can see if you look around this is a big program with lots and lots of things happening next time we're going to talk about these tools up here what they do and how to use them to the best effect uh, over here you've got a whole series of tabs some of which I've never even looked at yet but uh, we'll get to them in future episodes of this tutorial series mm -hmm.